A lot of data is stored on our iPhones. We have little access to this data. The amount of data stored on our phones gives developers a lot of opportunities to build features using this data. But the features that are built are often limited, expensive, or shit no one asks for. And it doesn't help that it's all sold to data brokers to build my de facto social credit score. I mean, when the inevitable day comes that I need to be brain chipped to participate in society, I'd at least expect my brain chip to let me optimize my environment, like a riced out Linux distro. Android has ADB Bridge, which gives you a shell to pull all of your phone's data onto an external device. And Android can even generate backups that are browsable and well documented. iOS, on the other hand, would never allow you to get a shell on your device. And your full device backup options are limited to iCloud, which requires a subscription. Apple does let you backup your phone's data to a computer, but does not have a tool that allows you to browse these local backups or any documentation on the way the backup is formatted. Even trivial things like accessing your phone's pictures and notes are only available on iCloud. So to do something as simple as exporting your phone's contacts without paying for an iCloud account or some proprietary tool, we have to go to some extreme lengths. Hence the name of this video, exporting your contacts the hard way. To do this, you'll first need a computer to back up your iPhone on. Ideally, this computer should be running macOS, but the process is similar on Windows, and if you're on Linux, I'm sure you'll figure it out one day. For this example, I'm using a MacBook. First, plug in your phone to your Mac and select Trust Computer if you get this pop-up. Then open Finder, and you should see a device with the name of your phone under Locations. Trust this device, and you should see the options to back up your phone. Make sure to select Backup all the data on your iPhone to this Mac and do not select Encrypt Local Backup. Then click Backup Now, and after some time you should- Oh, and if you get this error, it means you made the poor choice of being broke and don't have enough space on your Mac to back up your iPhone. Your choices are now to either delete enough data to make room, or buy another MacBook. But wouldn't it be trivial for Apple to add an option to back up to an external drive? Actually, yes, but fuck you, right? To make this work with an external drive, we need to look at where Apple stores the backups in your file system, which is under the Home Folder, Library, Application Support, Mobile Sync. We can create a symbolic link to a folder to an external drive named Backup. You won't have to do this if you have enough space. A symbolic link on Unix devices is basically a folder shortcut, or a portal for files. To do this, we run the ln command with the s flag with the path to our external storage folder as the first argument, and the path to our mobile sync backup folder as the second argument. Now, if you view the mobile sync directory in Finder, you should see a new folder named backup with a little arrow indicating that it's a shortcut. If we drag a test file into this folder, it should appear in our external drive folder. When we run the backup again, we suddenly have enough room and our backup will be stored on our external drive. After the backup is complete, you should see a new folder in your backup location with dozens of nondescript directories containing hundreds of nondescript files with no file extensions. Finder seems to think all of these files are documents. When we open one of them up in the default editor, it shows gibberish. But some of this gibberish is in English, like the word EXIF. EXIF stands for Exchangeable Image File Format, which is used to embed metadata in images. If we run the Unix file command on this file, it confirms that the document is actually a JPEG image. So if we rename the file with a .jpg extension, Finder recognizes it and we can now see the image. We can use the find command to run the file command recursively on every file in our backup directory and save this output to a text file. When we open up this text file, it reveals that our backup contains more than just images, things like XML documents, databases, uh, videos, SQLite, all that but everything seems to be randomly placed with no order. How are we supposed to find the file that contains our contacts? That's where these files at the root of your backup come in handy. The important one is the manifest.db file. It's an SQLite database. This database contains a table named files, which is an index for all files contained in the backup. The file ID column in this table contains the name of the file in the backup and appears to be a SHA-1 hash. I'm not sure what this hash is derived from because it doesn't map to the actual SHA-1 hash of the file. This domain column contains strings that reference the domain of the file. In the context of the iOS file system, domains are like tags that separate various types of data and files for different usage in the operating system. For example, a file under the network domain could contain a database with a list of Wi-Fi networks the phone has connected to. And if we search the database for the file name of the image that we found, we can see that it falls under the camera roll domain. 
I'm assuming the relative path column contains the path of the file as it would be seen on the user's device if we could get a shell. And the file column contains blob data with some more metadata about the file. With this in mind, we can start to narrow down our search for our contacts database. First, I searched for contacts in the domain and relative path columns, which returned over 20 rows containing the keyword. But none of these files actually had what I was looking for. After some research, I found this digital forensics tool called iLeap. It's written in Python and can parse artifacts from an iOS backup. It also generates a full report of what it found on an HTML web page. Install iLeap by cloning it and running pip install requirements.txt. Then make a directory named report and run the script specifying that it's an iTunes backup with a path to the backup directory and output directory for the report. After it's done, you should have a new directory in your output folder with a bunch of HTML files. Open one of these in your browser to see what iLeap was able to find. When I first opened this report, I was a bit overwhelmed by just how much data it was able to extract. I've censored most of this for obvious reasons, but you can use your imagination. The report includes things like every message you've ever sent or received, and whether or not you read that message, even deleted ones, the Bluetooth MAC address of every device you've ever connected to or been in proximity of, the name and BSSID of every Wi-Fi network you've ever connected to or been in proximity of, as well as the first and last time you connected to that network. I even found networks dated before I actually bought the phone, meaning that even if you don't have iCloud enabled on your device, Networks are still somehow tied to your Apple ID. The contacts are displayed under the address book tab, neatly formatted as HTML tables. When I first did this, I didn't see an option to export them and missed that the report actually makes a directory with TSV files containing all of the data found in the report, including your contacts. So if you just want a quick way to export your contacts, there you go. But if you're set on doing this the hard way or you want to learn how to extract further information from your backup, keep watching. On this page generated by iLeap, it says that it saved our contacts database under the following path. But where did it get it from? I searched for address book in our manifest database and bingo. I copied this to a new file with a .db extension and opened it up. And it appears to be the same one from the report. The database is a bit more complicated than what you might expect for a contacts book. The database has over 30 tables and a bunch of complex triggers. Like what do you really need to store contacts besides the name, number, and notes about the person? How hard could it possibly be to associate the numbers with the names? But after digging around for a while, I found some tables with names and some tables with numbers, but no tables with names and numbers associated. Rather than try to figure out this archaic structure on my own, I just checked to see how iLeap did it. And if we search for address book in the repository, we can see that there is a get address book function defined in artifacts slash address book.py. In this function, they build an SQL query and use what it returns to build the HTML tables and TSV files seen in the report. I'm glad I gave up trying to write my own query when I did because this thing somehow combines three different tables to get what we need. If we run this query on our own address book, it returns the same data as seen in the report. I took this script and modified it a little bit so the function just returns the names and numbers and writes it to a CSV. The full script can be found in the description. While iLeap is great for extracting your own contacts and other metadata from your iPhone, most of us don't really have a need for knowing what Wi-Fi network we were close to five years ago. And if anybody does, it's probably the prosecution and you're in deep shit. With the data provided in one of these backups, it's actually possible to recreate the iCloud experience with a desktop application. But I haven't found any open source projects that do exactly this. I started working on a script last year at a hackathon, and it segments artifacts found into individual directories, but I haven't really done anything else. There are a couple paid products that provide an awesome user experience better than iCloud. They'll even help you get into your phone if you forgot the password. But they have a price tag of contact us and are only sold to law enforcement agencies and third world dictators. The ethical considerations of the widespread usage of products like Celebrite to gain convictions based off of digital evidence acquired by zero-day vulnerabilities is a topic that deserves its own video. But if I learned anything during my brief dive into digital forensics just to get a CSV of my contacts, it's that your phone does not forget anything and knows more about you than you know about yourself. Even if you take all the normal privacy precautions like avoiding cloud services and running advanced privacy settings on your browser, etc., a dedicated malicious actor with physical access to your device is all it takes to compromise you. So maybe rethink your four-digit PIN before leaking the launch codes on your Minecraft Discord. A more detailed blog post about the topics discussed in this video is in the description. 
Thank you for watching. <clears throat> so after spending like 12 hours writing and editing this video, I found out that in a recent iOS update, they added the ability to bulk export all of your contacts to a vCard file. You can airdrop this to your computer and probably ask ChatGPT to write a Python script to convert it into a CSV. That's what I get for waiting like a year to make this video, I guess.